The bell has rung, which means that our bell ringer should be completed. So today's bell ringer says, list as many insects you can without any outside information or sources. So when we completed our bell ringer today, that means that we should not have used any outside material. So Colin, can you give us an example of one of the insects that you listed for your bell ringer? Um, a grasshopper. Okay, grasshopper is very good. Another example would have probably been maybe a bee like we have on the screen. Um, but if you haven't already noticed, today we're talking about entomology. So we're beginning our entomology unit today. And so specifically what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a whole group discussion during our PowerPoint presentation. And we're going to talk about what the definition of an insect is, the parts of the insects, as well as what classifies an insect. Then we're going to go outside and do a small group activity where we collect our own insects. Then we're going to do an individual activity where we review everything that we've discussed today through a small reading passage. When we think of insects, a lot of times we don't think of their importance. I know when I think of an insect, I think of a mosquito and how you're out in the summer and you get bit by them and they create these nasty red welts on their arm. And I feel as though most of the time when people think of insects, they just think of them as these pesky, annoying nuisances that we really don't need. But when you look and think of the importance, they're actually super important. So take a couple of minutes with your shoulder partner and talk about the possible outcomes if the insects didn't exist. All right, who wants to tell us what some of the outcomes were that they discussed with their shoulder partner? Okay, so that's right. So insects play a very important role, like I said earlier. So Colin said the world would eventually end. Insects are part of the food chain, so they are food for some animals that we actually eat. And then also, if you think about it, if we didn't have bees, what would happen? The, the flowers wouldn't be pollinated. So there's lots of things that go into it. And when you really sit back and think about it, insects are necessary for life. So it's important that we learn about them. So before I pull up my PowerPoint presentation on the screen, I turned the PowerPoint presentation into this nice, neat Word document. I copy and pasted it. And but if you see, there are some blanks where the information is missing. So it's important as we're going over the PowerPoint and we're having our whole group discussion that you fill in the blanks with the necessary information because this is going to be your study guide for our test next week. I'm going to pass these out. All right, so all we should have on our desks right now are notes and a pencil. Okay. So entomology. What is entomology? Entomology is the branch of zoology that deals with the study of insects. On average, there are more than 750,000 species of insects that have been identified worldwide. That's really crazy to think because when you think of insects, you could probably only name about five or ten. I think that's the most that we had for being able to name this morning. There are approximately 10,000 species of insects that are harmful to humans. Can anybody think of an example of an insect that is harmful to humans? A wasp. A wasp, yes, that's very good. A one that I can think of would be um, a type of spider um, things like that. Certain spiders are very harmful to us as well. So the classification of insects. So we've talked about this in sciences before, um, but it goes from kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. And this is the same thing for all species of insects, animals. They all follow this classification of insects. The highest level is obviously the kingdom. This is the most specific, is the species level. Organisms are usually classified by the genus and the species. This is called a binomial nomenclature. Does anybody know how we probably write binomial nomenclature? Okay, so what you do first is you write the genus is capitalized, the species is lowercase, and then it has to be italicized. So when you're writing this, when we talk about specific species of insects later on with their scientific names, it's important that we remember how to write them. Of insects. Dolphoptera, that includes the grasshopper that Colin was talking about earlier, and the locust. Demiptera includes the true bugs such as leafhoppers and plant bugs. The lepidoptera is moths and butterflies. And then the homoptera is the aphids. If 
any more time say needed? Does anybody have any questions so far? And we're not really needing to worry about the proper spelling of these. We just need to get a good idea of what insects fall in with which ones. So when it comes to studying, I'm not going to grade you super hard on spelling on the test, but I would like for you to know what insects fall within each order. The last two are the Thysanoptera, which are thrips, and the Coleoptera, which is the largest group of insects orders. This has beetles. Put a star by that because that's important for our test later. So how are the insects grouped? By the way they feed on plants and by their mouth parts. Can anyone guess how many different types of mouth parts we think insects have? Any other guess? Four. Four is very close. It's actually six. It's crazy because if you really think about it, you probably thought insects all had the same mouth part or maybe two different types. But there's actually six. So we have sponging, rasping, sucking, siphoning, chewing, lapping, chewing, and then piercing, sucking. Insects have no internal skeleton and they rely on their hard outer coating exoskeleton, which protects their inner organs and supports their body. So there are three parts of an insect. There's the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. The head has a pair of compound eye and two sensory appendages called antennas. Thorax is divided into three segments from which are attached to three pairs of legs. It's important that we write these specific down because an insect has to have three pairs of legs. So that means that it needs to have six legs all together. So it's important that we understand these very specific things. This is why spiders are not technically called an insect because they have how many legs? Eight. Eight, very good. And then the abdomen is attached to the thorax, which contains more segments. Okay, so this is all, this is where we're gonna stop today notes. We're going to continue these tomorrow into the next lesson. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you to the count of 10 to clear your desk of everything. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What we're going to do is I'm going to divide you into groups of three. But before I do that, I'm going to explain the activity. So in your groups of Three. We're going to go outside, we're going to get some Ziploc bags, and we're going to find three different types of insects. They could be dead or alive. Please try not to find some dangerous ones like wasps or bees. We don't want you guys to get some, but I do want you to understand the importance of finding three different types of insects because I don't want all of you to bring me grasshoppers because it's important that we have different ones for an activity that we're doing later in the week. Now we're going to go into the backyard of the ag building. Where are we going to go? The backyard of the ag building. If I see anybody out in the front yard, this is going to be the last time this semester that I let you guys go outside. Doing activities like these are a privilege. because we, we can sit here and we can lecture or we can go outside and do an activity. So it's up to you guys. Now before I separate you into groups, what are some expectations that you have in small groups from your group members. Colin, what's something that you expect from your group members when working together? To find some bugs that aren't the same kind. Okay, what about how, okay, so you want them to work together to come to a common goal. So we need to have teamwork. It shouldn't be one person doing all the work. All three of you should be looking for bugs. You should be cooperative and respectful of your other group members. And if you're having trouble finding some bugs, Work with the other groups, ask them where they found theirs, or switch until you each have three different ones. Are there any questions? All right, I'm gonna divide you up into your groups. Okay, now that you're divided, we're gonna get about 12 to 15 minutes to work on this task. All right, let's go outside. Okay, you can just set your bags of your insects by the door. So now that we have our insects, we're gonna use those later in the week and we're gonna actually identify the body parts and everything on them. So 
Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to give you the count of 10 to have just a pencil on your desk. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I just passed out to you a reading activity. So I passed you out three different pieces of paper. So the first page is a reading passage. And it's going to review all the stuff that we talked about today. So then after that, there are some questions on the next page about the reading passage. So you're going to read the passage individually, and then you're going to answer the questions. Once you're done with that, you're going to see a B diagram on the next page with the body parts labeled at the bottom. You're going to cut the body parts out, and then you're going to place them on the B where you think they're supposed to go. You're going to raise your hand, and if it's right, then I'll give you some tape to tape it down. Now, I would like for you to read the passage and answer the questions first before completing the B diagram. Now, this is individual work, so there should be no talking unless it's to me to ask any questions or to show me your B diagram. Are there any questions? Okay, we're going to have about 12 minutes to do this. You guys can go ahead and start.
If you need more time, say need it. Need it. Right. And now we got two more minutes to finish. Completed. Okay. So first, let's go to our question. Was the passage easy or difficult to understand? Was it easy or difficult? Paul? It was pretty easy. It was pretty easy? All right, let's go ahead and go through our answers. So how do you know if an insect is an insect and not another animal? Paul? They have three body parts, six legs. Okay. Do we okay, so very good. So they have to have three body parts. They have to have six legs or three pairs of legs. They have to have antennas and they have to have wings. That are the, those are the classifications of an insect. What are those three body parts that Paul is talking about? So what are the three body regions of an insect? Colin? The head, the thorax, and the abdomen. The abdomen, very good. So two of those are very easy to remember because we have a head and we have an abdomen usually called abs. And then what? why are the insect's bodies so hard? The skeletons are on the outside. See, they have exoskeletons. So that's the opposite of us. Our skeletons are inside our body, but they have an exoskeleton which protects all the things that they have on the inside. So what is an entomologist called? It's the scientist who studies insects. Okay, so earlier when we talked about what entomology was, it's hanging off of that. Do you remember what branch entomology is under? No. Zoology. Remember, we talked about it earlier in class. So remember when we get done through our notes to keep studying that because that's going to be on our test next week. So next we have the diagram of the bee. And Colin did his really well, so we're going to use his as an example. So... If you have these two things right here, these are the antennas. What's this right here, Colin? The head. These pointing right here, these are pointing at the legs. This is the thorax. This right here is pointing at the wings. So what does that leave us with left, Colin? The abdomen. Good. So we're going to have about 10 seconds to clear our desk of everything. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. So before we close out today, we've talked about a lot of different things. We began our unit of entomology. So we talked about what the definition of entomology is. We talked about what the classifications of an insect are, their various body parts, and how they have different types of body parts. Why do we think it's important that they have different types of body parts? Take a couple of minutes, talk to your shoulder partner, and discuss some reasons why we think it's important to know the different types of body parts on an insect. All right, who wants to volunteer and tell us some of the reasons that they discussed with their shoulder partner? Who wants to raise their hand and tell me? Colin? Yeah. Why do you think it's easier why do you think it's important that we're able to identify the different types of body parts on insects? So that we know which one belongs to which one's not. That's good. It's very important to know that because you can tell how some of them are harmful or how they're not because of the way that we know certain things. So when we know that certain body parts and that certain insects have certain things, we can identify them easier for reasons like being able to tell which ones are harmful and which ones aren't. So it's very good. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pass out this rubric. And what this is, is our take-home project for this unit is a build-a-bug project. So I just passed out the rubric and the description. And so what it is, is using items from your house, you're going to build a bug. Now a walking stick, a 
is not included in this because that's too easy. So anything else is fine. And I'd really like it if you came and approved it to me first before building it. But you're going to take household items such as water bottles, pipe cleaners, uh, paper towel rolls, anything like that, and you're going to build an insect. And then once you've built your insect, you're going to write a brief description about that insect. And all the details of that are in that, as well as the rubric on how I'm going to grade it. So it needs to be creative, it needs to be neat, and it needs to be done on time. Now the due date is when our test is going to be next Friday. So when does this do? And it's important that you do not wait until Thursday to do this because if you do, you're not going to get a good grade because it's not going to have enough time and you're not going to be prepared enough to do it. Do we have any questions about anything that we've discussed today? Okay, tomorrow we're going to be talking about the insect mouth parts in particular. So we're going to talk about them and what they do and what type of insects have each one. But we have about a minute left in class, so let's put everything up. Let's make sure all the trash is in the trash can, all of our materials are together, and that we have everything and wait for the bell